Hi, it's John from Android Alex, and this is a battery drain comparison test for the Galaxy S21. So on the left we have the Exynos 2100 variant, and on the right we have the Snapdragon 888. In the top right and left of the screen you can see the battery indicator and the current system temperature. And what we're going to do in this test is just run through some common applications and some games and just see how long both these phones can last. So all the tests we're running today will be running for about half an hour each. So we're starting with a WhatsApp video call, we're then going to move on to a WhatsApp voice call, we then move on to a standard mobile or cellular call, followed by some PUBG, some COD Mobile, we'll do some standby testing, some YouTube, Twitter, Reddit, Instagram, and of course everyone's favourite TikTok. So like I said, each test runs for about 30 minutes. The Twitter one is slightly slower, but what I'm doing is using a macro tool here to actually run the tests for me, so I don't have to sit and babysit the phones for the whole day. So I've put some time codes in the description if you want to jump to any specific area of the test to see how the phones compare with each other. Also be sure to keep an eye out on the temperature during the test to see exactly how hot each phone gets. Now this isn't the CPU temperature and this isn't the GPU temperature, just the overall system temperature, so mainly just the battery and how hot it's getting inside. The temperature is updated manually by myself so I've tried to be as accurate as possible but it's not going to be 100% accurate compared to what you see on the screen but it just makes it a bit easier for you to see. Okay, so the WhatsApp video call has finished and it used 8% on both phones. So we're now moving on to the WhatsApp voice call here. I wasn't too worried about the screens being left on here because we know during a voice call, you would have the phone up to your head or even wear a headset. So the screen doesn't really matter if it turns off. Okay, so after 30 minutes on a voice call, we have lost 2% on the Exynos and 4% on the Snapdragon. So we're now moving on to the cellular call here. I did turn off Wi-Fi just to make sure it wasn't using a Wi-Fi calling here as well. So we know that it is just using the cellular network. Again, I let the screen go off here because you wouldn't normally have your screen on whilst on a phone call. Just to point out as well, I have left the cases on both of these phones. They're both speaking cases just to try and make it more realistic so that the heat will be trapped as much as it would be for anyone else using a case on their phone. Now obviously there's two different SIM cards. One is on the 3 network and the other is on the Vodafone network in the UK but they are both connected to a 4G network. Okay, so after the phone call, we've lost 3% on the Exynos and 2% on the Snapdragon. So next up, we're gonna move on to the PUBG test. So all this is doing at the moment is just running around in circles in the training area. For some reason, the Exynos version, I think I may have put the left thumbstick in the incorrect position as it wasn't pressing properly. And for whatever reason, I couldn't actually press it properly myself. But not to worry, I was still trying to get it to run around as much as possible to add some pressure onto the CPU and the GPU. Okay, so after 25 minutes of PUBG, we lost 9% on both phones here. So we're now gonna move into COD Mobile. So again, rather than just being stood still in a match, this is gonna just run around randomly and turn every so often. That's just to ensure that the CPU and GPU are actually being utilized properly. If you're just stood still, then it is a lot less intensive on the processor. So I wanted to make sure this was as realistic as possible. Okay, so after 30 minutes of COD Mobile, we've lost 8% on the Exynos and 6% on the Snapdragon. So I'm just doing a restart here and we're now gonna go into the standby test. So half an hour of just sat doing nothing. We've got the always on display on. We've got Wi-Fi and mobile data turned on. You can see things are syncing in the background on both phones. So again, it's as fair as I could make it really. Okay, and after half an hour of standby, we have lost just 3% on the Exynos and 2% on the Snapdragon. So the next test is just going through a YouTube playlist here. So this is just half an hour of watching YouTube. Interesting to see the Snapdragon does get quite a bit warmer during the YouTube test here.
And after half an hour of YouTube, we've lost 4% on the Exynos and 7% on the Snapdragon. Next, we're just moving on to the Twitter app here. And this is just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling as long as possible. I did have to keep going back up to the top because unlike other apps like Reddit and TikTok, you can't just keep on scrolling in Twitter. It will actually come to an end. Not to worry though, this is obviously just testing the processor. Okay, so after about 20 minutes or so of Twitter, we lost 4% on both phones. So moving on to Reddit next. And again, you can just keep on scrolling and scrolling on Reddit and it just keeps loading up new stuff. So that was a nice uh, app to be able to test out. Constantly using the Wi-Fi, obviously. We're nearly down to the halfway mark on both phones here. And after half an hour of Reddit scrolling, we've lost 6% on the Exynos and 7% on the Snapdragon. So next up, it was just going into Spotify here and we're gonna be playing a playlist for half an hour. This shouldn't be too taxing really. Obviously the initial load of the MP3 in the background, we use a bit of Wi-Fi, but other than that, it's just having the screen on whilst listening to music really. Okay, and after half an hour of Spotify, we lost 4% on the Exynos and 5% on the Snapdragon. So next we're going straight into the Instagram Reels here. And after half an hour of scrolling, we have lost 8% on the Exynos and 6% on the Snapdragon. Next up is everyone's favorite, TikTok. There's only a one or 2% difference in the battery at the moment, so very, very close between them. And after half an hour of TikTok, we lost 7% on the Exynos and 8% on the Snapdragon. So now we're just gonna loop back and do another YouTube playlist here. So after another half hour of YouTube, we lost 5% on both phones. Let's move straight on to the Twitter test again. Just trying to get these drained as quick as possible now. Obviously the test is nearing the seven hour mark. So after another 20 minutes on Twitter, we lost 3% on the Exynos and 4 on the Snapdragon. Just going through another session on Reddit.
and you can see that the gap between the two phones is increasing slightly now so the Exynos on around 20 while the Snapdragon is closer to 15. So another half hour or so of Reddit and we lost another 7% on the Exynos and 8% on the Snapdragon. One of the last tests here we're on to Spotify again again just playing a playlist for half an hour. Okay, so we're over the seven and a half hour mark, which is pretty impressive really. So we're now gonna just go into PUBG and just get these finished off. See the gap between the two is quite a lot bigger now, but overall throughout the test, they've both been very close to each other. Okay, and the Snapdragon is just about to die here on the 8 hour and 1 minute mark, which is very impressive really. And the Exynos is just a few minutes behind with 8 hours and 6 minutes. So that's really good scores for both phones here. They're pretty much identical as you can see. Now I have put all these details into a spreadsheet so we can have a quick look at the performance of both phones. Okay, so here is the spreadsheet. I've put together all the scores here and where there's been a difference in the amount of battery used, I've highlighted the phone or the processor which used the most battery. So let's just go down the list here. So what's that video call? They both used the same amount for a half hour call. The voice call, the Exynos only used 2% whereas the Snapdragon used 4%. Standard cellular call, the Exynos used 3% which is 1% more than the Snapdragon. Then PUBG, they both used exactly the same percent. I will just point out that we're both on smooth and extreme for that test. Same with COD Mobile, it was on the lowest and the max frame rate. But we can see that the Exynos did use a couple percent more than the Snapdragon during COD Mobile. So the standby test, the Exynos used 3% whereas the Snapdragon only used 2%, that was in half an hour. So both phones had a SIM card in, obviously they're going to be connected to different networks so the results will vary slightly. Really you'd hope that the standby time would be a bit better than that on both to be honest, maybe 1% of both would be nice with a maximum of maybe 2% per hour. But you can see here that is uh, it's going to use 4% an hour on the Snapdragon and 6% per hour on the Exynos. Now obviously that does depend on what's happening in the background, WhatsApp and any other syncing of email and stuff but uh, that's just what we got in this test. So moving on to YouTube, quite interestingly the Snapdragon used a fair bit more than the Exynos here. They were both set to 50% brightness but the Snapdragon did use 3% more battery. On Twitter they both used the exact same amount which is 4% and then Reddit, Snapdragon used 1% more than the Exynos. Spotify, it used again 1% more than the Exynos. Instagram, the Exynos used a couple of percent more during the test compared to the Snapdragon. TikTok, the Snapdragon used an extra percent compared to the Exynos. YouTube, they actually used the exact same this time, 5%. And then Twitter, we've used an extra percent on the Snapdragon. Reddit, another extra percent on the Snapdragon. And then Spotify, an extra percent on the Exynos. And then the last test just to finish the drain was PUBG, where we used the final 15% on the Exynos and the last 12% on the Snapdragon. So again, eight hours and six minutes of screen on time, mostly screen on. There was a half hour to an hour of time where the phone was locked either during a call or during the standby. But overall, that's a really good result for both phones. There's very little in it, to be honest. So if you are worried about battery life, I wouldn't worry about either of these phones because they both performed very well indeed. So average temperatures throughout the tests, the Snapdragon did seem to get a bit warmer overall. Again, I said I left the cases on in this test because that's how a normal person would have their phone with a case. So it is as fair as I can make it. I didn't bother doing a camera test during this video because I don't think filming a desk is a very good representation of the camera usage particularly. You do need to be moving around and focusing on different objects and different scenes for the camera test to be fair. I have done a proper camera drain test which I've linked down below in the previous camera test that I did. So if you are interested in the camera drain, 
you can have a look at that video. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click on the like button and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos in the future. If you've got any other tests that you want me to do with these two phones, let me know down below in the comments. And let me know your thoughts also down below as to which phone you think performed better and which for you would be the better chip to run with. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.